Um, we're mo usually challenging either Martin or John. So uh, that's uh, most of our job is basically annoying uh, Googlers. Uh, but today I want to talk about how to make your website uh, JavaScript friendly, SEO friendly. Uh, because I'm not sure if you guys, uh, how many of you work with, with JavaScript websites or just with the, oh, I didn't expect almost everyone. Uh, so that's very nice. So basically uh, what most people don't know about is that most websites, maybe not most, like Quite a lot of websites have massive issues with JavaScript, and Google got so much better at that, but they are still struggling with, with a couple of things. So today I want to talk, they don't. Um, I'm going to have a few slides that, I'm gonna, that we're going to ask Martin to close his eyes. Uh, but um, today I want to talk about JavaScript and SEO, and we all know that this relationship is very, very complicated. Uh, it's mostly because JavaScript is very, very dynamic and there are so many different flavors, types of JavaScript and um, it basically is ever evolving topic. And if that was enough, Google and JavaScript have a very, very, very difficult relationship because Google is um, <laughs> owning or maybe not owning, how would you say that? Well, well, connected to... Connected to Angular, how would you like supporting Angular? So Google is somehow connected to Angular. Uh, we have started the project, I believe, and we are maintaining it. So but just just for just for the record, the Angular people are really really nice people. They come to us and say, "Mark, can you help us with this thing?" And I'm like, "No." <laughs> there is the open public <clears throat> way to ask this question. And we'll get the same support. So Angular, what's actually um, something that probably Martin wouldn't say, but Angular was one of the most problematic frameworks. That's true. Which is not something that you would expect. And website Angular.io wasn't indexed in Google for a few years. Yeah, because uh, they were super shit. Yeah. Know. So a lot of people, like in 2016, we, we, uh, we are a technical SEO agency. I'm sorry, I didn't introduce myself. But we deal with technical SEO for enterprises and for e-commerce and for large websites. And in 2016, we got kind of sick and tired of all the developers and website owners asking us about very, very specific JavaScript SEO things that no one knew about. Um, so there's that time recently where all the JavaScript madness began. So everyone started developing in JavaScript without fully understanding the technology. And at some point, JavaScript became more important than basically earnings and traffic and, yeah, and, and websites. Um, and JavaScript SEO is still completely misunderstood in 2019. A lot of developers or SEOs are trying to do JavaScript SEO, but what they do is basically they advise everyone to pre-gender their content. So it's not really high-end uh, technical SEO or JavaScript SEO. Uh, and if you look at websites like wish.com, one of my favorite websites, uh, if you disable JavaScript, the website disappears, which is fine, but at the same time, they are not indexed in Google with most of their products and content. So they're walking away from quite a lot of income, quite a lot of money, and this is not the only example. We're time limited, but we have a database of probably like 100 websites, including like AliExpress, EA Games, and all the big brands that lose massive traffic, and I'm not talking like 10, 20 percent, uh, but sometimes like 80 percent because of uh, how they handle JavaScript. If you look at Wish.com and their visibility chart, you can see that this relationship is not going well. This is like um, an equivalent of a couple that's uh, having a very rough time, they get together and then it's uh, happening again. So this is more or less what's happening with quite a lot of big brands and JavaScript SEO. Uh, and there is a massive cost of JavaScript, massive cost that somehow is overlooked. Uh, just to show you an example, um, let's have a look at the video of CNN um, being opened on iPhone X and Motorola G4 just to show you how mm, resource-heavy JavaScript uh, can be. Uh, so I'm not going to play the full thing because the Motorola G4 crashed halfway through. Um, but if you look at iPhone X, it's, it loaded CNN, and Motorola is still struggling with even uh, sending the request. So this is a problem that we, we have to face. And the desktop is dead. And this is the data from Germany. Uh, and if you look at Switzerland, it's, it's actually very, very surprising because if you look again, Germany, 23% uh, for Google D comes from desktop. 
<laughs> so just 20% of traffic comes from desktop devices right now. Uh, in Switzerland, this is shockingly, um, you guys still have quite a lot of desktop traffic, which I totally don't understand. Like in Europe, you're actually one of the exceptions. But m most countries, uh, you guys are not, um, most countries actually don't have that much uh, desktop traffic anymore. Uh, let's move back in time into 2015 and look at some of the data. Uh, so Hulu.com was one of the websites that actually inspired us to dive deeper into this topic. So Hulu.com, if you, do, do you know Hulu.com? They're the biggest competitors of Netflix, and we will see in, in a minute why uh, they are not <laughs> uh, doing that well recently. Um, so they actually jumped onto the JavaScript hype train in 2015-ish, uh, and they figured, okay, uh, they were very curious about that, but they couldn't figure this out. Uh, and they didn't ask them, themselves one <laughs> most important question, like, can this backfire somehow? Can launching a, a JavaScript SEO website, JavaScript, sorry, JavaScript a website without full knowledge of JavaScript SEO is a good idea? This is, this is how their traffic looked like after, <laughs> after that. They've lost, uh, overnight, they've lost more than 40%. Then with the, with the next... Uh, with, with upcoming weeks, they, they've lost altogether around 70% of their traffic. It got so bad that you couldn't find any of the Hulu shows in Google, and they were only available at Hulu.com. So if you wanted to watch a show from Hulu, whoa, I broke something. If you wanted, ah, oh, they're hearing us. Uh, so if you wanted uh, to watch any show from Hulu.com, the only websites that would show up in Google were torrents. <laughs> or, so, <laughs> so this is how bad it looks like, and it's still not fully fixed until today. But let's uh, move forward. So what exactly went wrong? Uh, there was no data at that time, and we figured, okay, if there is no data, we need to uh, get it somehow. And we figured we're going to create uh, a dream team to basically build an experiment. And we've built the first JavaScript SEO experiment in the history of of the internet, we, we chose this, you know, very cool name. So it was JSSEO.expert. The idea was extremely, extremely easy. Uh, simple, sorry. The idea was very, very simple. We basically built a website where every single subpage is a different framework. And so we would see, okay, how is Google and other search engines, as we're gonna talk about in a second, how are they dealing with indexing all the different frameworks? So basically, if you go to JSSEO.expert slash view, you will see uh, content generated by view. Couldn't get any simpler. At the very beginning, we only had hello, hello world. In like within a few days, we just um, we we've, we've uh, found a way to, to to generate quite a lot of content uh, through machine learning. But uh, we basically went with uh, hello world, and that wasn't available uh, in all of the framework. In some of uh, it was, but basically just to give you a, a short uh, example, how it worked like. Uh, if you look at the hello world, switch off the JavaScript, it disappears. Very simple. So if we see that Google indexed the content within the red um, like frame, um, we know that Google parsed that JavaScript framework, the JavaScript code. The idea was extremely, extremely simple. But the results were really, really <laughs> mind-blowing. So if you look at that, Google did pretty well with most of the framework. It actually struggled a little bit with Ember. It struggled with AngularJS uh, because it turned out it wasn't Google's, Google's fault, it was Google's AngularJS fault because they had a problem with their own library. Um, but it got quite interesting because it turned out that Google didn't crawl uh, the code that was placed externally, but they crawled the content that was basically, if the JavaScript code was inline, it was working fine. And we found quite a lot of different anomalies. We played with that data, and, and we basically found a video from 2015 from Jeff Wellplay, who's somehow involved in Angular project, saying that if you care about SEO, you still need to have server-rendered content. And this got us thinking, how are other search engines dealing with that? And if you look at that, only Google and Ask, and I Google that, Ask is not saying that publicly, but Ask is using Google's uh, servers, basically database. So Ask is just simply Google. Uh, it's not publicly announced, but we, we played with that, and it is. So only Google is able to crawl any JavaScript as of 2017. It changed a little bit. I was talking to the guys from Bing. We were like involved in, in that project with, with in the Bing JavaScript project in, for a while. 
but Bing is doing something with JavaScript now. It's still not even close to where Google was in 2017. Um, but this, this still wasn't the main problem because we figured, okay, Google can index some of the content, it's tricky, but it wasn't the main problem. Um, we couldn't find any JavaScript uh, website that ranks until 2018. Uh, and I reached out to John Miller with questions <laughs> and John Miller at that time, unfortunately, couldn't help us for reasons we can only speculate about, but I'm guessing they basically didn't communicate their problems with JavaScript or I don't know. But John Miller couldn't really help us with, with our questions, so we figured that we're gonna build more experiments. Before I move forward with that, I'm guessing you're pretty technical, so I'm not sure if this slide is important, but just for those of you who aren't, HTML is just like a ready-to-go cake, so all the bots, all the users just basically get the content they see. With JavaScript, it's a little bit more complex. You get all the pieces that you need to render or in this scenario, bake together in, to get the final product. And it's very, very, very expensive. So looking at that, some frameworks are indexable, but there is a very, very fine print. It seems that Google is not really, really fond of JavaScript, but at the same time, they are very, very uh, interested in HTML. And if you wanna, um, on a meme, on a meme uh, basically, we saw that every single HTML website is indexed within minutes. With JavaScript, it's not that easy. And I'm guessing you already know where I'm going with that. We're gonna build one more experiment. And we've created the simplest possible experiment we could think of. We've created a very simple JavaScript and HTML website. They're both identical, but you can only get to page number three from page number two and so on. So basically, if, if Google would index the page number six, we knew, we knew that they basically went through every single one of them. With HTML, Google indexed that within minutes. With JavaScript, uh, it only went from home page, from the home page to the page number one, and it completely died. And it's not even, I'm not even talking about hours or days, but Google didn't index any JavaScript within that page for six months. So basically everything after, after the first subpage was invisible. Um, and we, we've been repeating this experiment actually until today. There's a few things that has changed. I'm gonna talk about that, but at that time, around 2017, uh, the results were always the same. Google would never crawl JavaScript deeper than homepage and the first linked page. Uh, so we came to the conclusion that JavaScript, even if indexable when you force Google to do that, is gonna kill your crawler budget completely. So, uh, after uh, roughly a year, John Miller admitted that uh, crawling and indexing is slower for JavaScript than static HTML. We've been actually waiting for that for, for two years to, from, from, like, the main problem we had that developers didn't really believe us, even though we had experiments, because we were the only ones talking about that. So this, I don't even remember if that was a tweet or a hangout, this sentence from John Miller is something we almost tattooed on our foreheads for a, for, a, for a year, because we finally had something to talk to about with developers. Uh, and his advice helped in general, so his, um, uh, his um, help was really appreciated, uh, and I know it worked both ways, I know that um, Google actually uh, used that experiment uh, a little bit as well. Uh, so after failing at the beginning with John Miller, I reached out to most like, like we actually reached out to like 20 different Googlers, but Ilya Grigorik was the one who responded. We flooded them with emails, tweets, and whatever. And we invited Ilya Grigorik to our Google Doc with every single thing we found out. And he started com commenting like crazy for a day, and then he disappeared. But he said that JavaScript SEO, JavaScript is not bad for SEO if done right. And he mentioned that there is a cost coming from uh, basically rendering that at uh, the Google site. So if you look at JavaScript, JavaScript, if, not, if it's not done right, which is a very broad statement, uh, is very expensive to run. And that's something we actually confirmed. So even if we put any like random number, we can say that HTML is pretty cheap. Like let's say that a page in HTML costs $1. For JavaScript, it's gonna be, let's say, $100. Scale. Yeah. So fast forward to 2018, 
Uh, one more thing from Google that we really, really enjoyed is that uh, John Miller had this, um, had this uh, Google I.O. talk. Uh, I'm sorry, I don't do you know the name of Tom. With Tom, uh, I keep forgetting, sorry. So, and, and they mentioned finally uh, that Google is indexing uh, JavaScript with two waves. So the uh, first wave is basically they only look at HTML and the second wave uh, is when the resources are available is uh, indexing HTML. Uh, sorry, JavaScript. Yeah. Um, and this actually got a little bit tricky because JavaScript, uh, the second wave can take up to, they, they, like Googler said, up to two weeks. In our experiment, in our experience, it can take up to forever, which is, um, so we have websites from 2016 that are still not indexed. Um, let's go back to Hulu for a second because this is still ongoing. Uh, Hulu, after like one year from their massive drop, figured, okay, we're gonna fix that. They fixed the problem of their JavaScript on a desktop version. <laughs> what they didn't know, and that's actually the best jokes I, I have in this deck, uh, the mobile indexing, indexing weren't live around the same time. So they fixed it for desktop and Google never saw that. Uh, so, <laughs> so just to show you something that's extremely, extremely interesting here is that um, oh, we're on this. Yeah, we're, we're on the, So um, we're going to finish on, on time. We have 100 slides, and yeah. Uh, so um, mobile Google bot and Google and, and basically Chrome looks at the content from a different point of view at that time because they were using Chrome 41. Uh, and we saw something that's called partial indexing. In actually, we I came up with that name because we found that first. Uh, so all the content that wasn't available for mobile Googlebot wasn't indexed. So if you see, that was available only for basically browsers newer than Chrome 41, and it wasn't available for mo mobile Googlebot. So this content wasn't indexed at all. But at the same time, I'm sorry, this is like geek humor here. At the same time, if you look at anything that's available on both those screens, it's fully indexed. So they indexed only the static page of their website, uh, which is hilarious to me because they, it took them like one and a half year or something like that. So it was, yeah, it's like dark humor here. But yeah, I'm guessing it's not funny for Hulu. Uh, anyways, any content here, again, wouldn't be indexed uh, in Google. So they index just part of their website. Fast forward to 2019, because we're running out of time, Google got a little bit better with crawling and indexing JavaScript. So Google actually uh, bulked up a little bit. I'm guessing they, I don't know, built new servers or uh, hired more developers. I have no idea what they did. We probably need to get Martin uh, drunk and find out. Uh, <laughs> um, by the way, that's every SEO dream just to get Google drunk, and it never happened. Um, uh, so we're still waiting, Martin. Uh, or that it may be today, or maybe tonight. Uh, so um, crawler budget repeated in 2019. If you remember the explosion here, it's gone. So basically, the test websites we've created a few months ago and a few weeks ago because we just well, that's what we do in like Friday night. Um, they all work. So Google indexes JavaScript right now almost instantly. But there are some exceptions. We're going to talk about those. So if you look at National Geographic, they're a very good example. If you switch off JavaScript, the content disappears. 100% of JavaScript content indexed quickly because we check that as well. So we look at the sitemaps, last modification, all nice. ASOS.com, uh, same story. Without JavaScript, the content disappeared, 100% indexed. Oh, oh, yeah, here. Yeah. But there are some things that don't work yet, <laughs> and this is the part that's actually uh, gonna be a little bit upsetting for Martin, I'm guessing. Um, but there is some percentage of JavaScript content not indexed or in the index for um, for large websites, and this is actually where I'm getting with that. This is quite shocking. If we look at the ran random sample, and this is not for like the whole content, but just the content that's generated by JavaScript. Uh, Vice.com, 74%. Uh, but for example, Cosmopolitan.in. If you look at that, they only index. 49% of the content, and everything that relies on JavaScript is not indexed. Uh, again, a random sample, this is not like new content, it's, it's just like that. So with two waves of indexing, there's one more thing. As I mentioned before, you need to expect some delays in indexing your content, and this is the most shocking slide I have in my deck. I'm guessing, 
some of you will get that. As, we'll, we'll, we'll see that as um, extremely interesting here. So um, that's a geek test. If you if you find it interesting, no, sorry. Uh, so um, percentage of the JavaScript content not indexed after ten days. So we look at the sitemap. We take like a sample of 100, 1,000 URLs, and we check how much content is not is still not indexed after ten days. Uh, so looking at like Channel Four television, not of, none of their JavaScript content is indexed after four days, uh, ten days, and you would expect that to be quite efficient for for a website this site and this authority. Uh, all the recipes, 14% uh, is actually quite good, but for example, iStock, 50% of the content is still not indexed after 10 days. But we're gonna talk about a little bit of uh, Black Hat. Uh, and again, I'm super sorry, Martin, this is not like a link building Black Hat, this is geeky Black Hat. Um, so cloaking in 2019, this is something that we find extremely interesting. And we have a few websites, we have like Peppa episodes, we have Gans, we have Trump. Uh, today we're going to talk about guns because I know that you guys have guns in Swiss, uh, Switzerland. So this is we use this example. So uh, this is actually a website uh, that's cached by Google. So Google see okay, gun control. We're all for that. But if you open that website in your browser, you're going to see a completely different content. The only thing we did here is that you have to render JavaScript to see that. Uh, that. Uh, so you have a massive, massive potential. This is what you see in Chrome. Uh, this is what you see uh, in Google Cache, and this is not only about the, 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 the yes or no, but the whole content is completely different. Uh, so you can, I'm not advising that, but it's possible to play with, with content and hide content from Google with JavaScript uh, if basically JavaScript is going to rewrite the HTML. This is a little bit shady. Uh, I don't advise that, but it's possible. <laughs> So uh, just to finish, like they have like the final statement, Google got extremely, extremely good with crawling JavaScript, and they're the only search engine right now uh, doing that at scale. But if we look at that from our perspective, working, working with some of like the biggest e-commerce stores worldwide, with the new game and new rules, there are new players basically winning and losing just because of JavaScript. Uh, just to show you the example of Netflix versus Hulu, Hulu was much bigger in the States for years. So Hulu was winning until 2016 when, um, when Netflix basically took over. Because Netflix, if you don't know, like probably some of you are, are aware of that, Netflix is extremely good with technology, with JavaScript. They are like thought leaders in that field. Uh, Hulu, not so much. They've been bought by, uh, by Disney, and some of my friends from Disney are actually working with Hulu now. I'm hoping this is gonna get better eventually. But if you look at that, uh, Hulu lost just because of JavaScript and how probably there were some other problems, but mostly because of JavaScript, Hulu lost their position on the market. One last thing, this is my second last slide, almost, uh, is that uh, if you look at that, we went through, through 90 slides together, look at that. Uh, I have this theory that's, uh, uh, yeah, I have this theory that once Google is gonna completely index and like gonna be extremely good with indexing and uh, rendering JavaScript, Bing is gonna stand no chance because if all of you are gonna publish your websites in JavaScript, Bing is never, never gonna afford with the market share they have, they will never afford uh, rendering and indexing JavaScript at scale because of the price. So once they do that, and this is the animation I did myself, not the slide guy. So once they do that, Bing is gonna be in massive, massive uh, problem. They're gonna actually struggle with that. So just a to-do for you, because I, I believe that everything should be actionable. Uh, if you're choosing a framework, please, please, please don't go with, for example, Knockout, because we have clients who, who implemented Knockout a year ago. If you look at the Twitter, the last tweet is from three years ago. So we can assume that this framework is completely dead. Look at the frameworks that somehow support server-side rendering and, and or some of the new uh, new uh, solutions in, in the JavaScript field. Then don't push client-side rendered content to Google because it still it works in most cases, but it's still not perfect. It's not going to be for a while, um, I'm guessing. And so if you're choosing any way to to, to process your JavaScript, client-side rendering is is the least. This is not the food pyramid, this is the best year. So, uh, so client-side rendering is the worst. Go with hybrid rendering or server-side rendering. Um, Pre-rendering if you really, really have to. It's, it's not really uh, very good. And enjoy your traffic. Uh, at last, if whatever you do with JavaScript, 
Uh, just you need to experiment, experiment and measure before deploying your website so you don't repeat what Hulu.com did. And that's it. Thank you so much. Thing is fine. <laughs> Good search engine. No, like there.